Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be, where you're joining, uh, wherever you're joining us from today. Thank you so much for being with us today for this session on the Master in Management at ESCP Business School. My name is Jean Weckler. I'm in charge of marketing with the Master in Management. And I'm located on our Paris campus. Um, joining me today for this session are Samyak Dudgupta and Brendan Wilkerson, both of whom are current students at the Master Management uh, at ESCP, and they're also student ambassadors. So they are here to answer all of your questions today and share some of their insights. Um, just before we, they, I ask them to introduce themselves, I just want to give you some rules of the game. So today, the, the session is going to be part presentation and part Q&A. Uh, the presentation segment should take 35, 40 minutes, depending on how uh, chatty we are in particular today. Um, and at the end, we will be taking all of your questions live. However, that shouldn't keep you from asking your questions during the session. Um, and unfortunately, today I have been unable to, I wanted to um, make it so that you could not put questions in the chat, but for some reason, Zoom is not cooperating with me. Um, I would ask, however, if you could please ask all of your questions in the Q&A box and not the chat, because both um, Samyak and, and Brennan are going to try and keep up with you um, and answer all of those questions. Um, but in any case, do feel free to ask questions as they come up. Um, okay, and also the session is being recorded and you will receive a copy of it afterwards. So, um, Samyak, would you like to introduce yourself, share your background with your the people who are listening today? Yes, of course. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much. So, uh, my name is Samyak and I come from India. And before uh, coming to Europe and doing the MIM, I was uh, in an engineering college. I completed my engineering in India in electronics and communication engineering. And then I worked for a British cybersecurity firm called the SOFOS for two years. And uh, later, uh, while I was uh, working there, I realized that I need to uh, have some good consulting skills. I was working in some consulting, cybersec consulting. And then I figured out that, okay, Europe is a good place to learn uh, management. And then the three best colleges, HEC, ESSEC, and ESCP were the choices. And I finally chose uh, ESCP for its, um, for its multi-campus. That was the USP for me. And I finally decided to join ESCP. Uh, right now, uh, I'm in the Paris campus. I completed my first year. I joined in September 2020. And I've completed my first year. And right now, I'm in my gap semester. I found an internship here in Paris and uh, at Blablacar. I work as a product manager here and I'll be uh, spending my whole uh, semester working at Blablacar. And uh, starting from January, I'll be joining the London campus for my M2 year. And uh, my specialization there would be investment banking. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about me. Thank you. Thank you, Samyak. Brendan? Hi, everyone. I'm Brennan. I'm from the US near Seattle originally. And um, I'm a bit of an old man for the MIM. I waited for a few years after graduating for my undergraduate, um, which was in social psychology with a minor in business and in French. And I took that time to start traveling around and, and work as an au pair for a while. And uh, during that time, I was able to kind of take my GMAT and GRE and start looking at potential graduate programs because I knew I was interested in social impact. And at least in the US, I think also globally, uh, to get a lot of social impact done, you need to have uh, the ability to speak business. So I was looking for business programs. And one of my top differentiating factors was looking for a place that would let me travel and um, experience as many cultures as possible, practice new languages, meet people from different backgrounds. And so as soon as I found ESCP, that went straight to the top of my list. And since coming here, I started in Turin and then came to Paris. Um, and now, as just like Samyak, I'm also doing my gap where I was interning here in Paris at a small nonprofit that I bet no one's ever heard of uh, called Connexio, but it was a really cool opportunity. and. I'm hoping to go on exchange soon. Of course, with COVID, we'll see how that all turns out. But it's nice to see you guys here and happy to answer your question. Great, thanks so much. So there are a couple things that you need to know about us if you don't already. 
And those are that ESCP is the world's first business school because we were established in 1819. So just two years ago, we celebrated our 200th anniversary. And we have six campuses across Europe. We are located in Berlin, London, Madrid, Paris, Turin, and Warsaw, which allows us to provide you with a cross-cultural education that is seamless across all of those locations. We like to say that it all starts here. That's the school's motto. It all starts here because at ESCP, we are providing you a cross-cultural business education with a global perspective on management issues, yet a very strong connection with the business world. One of the reasons why we have such a strong connection is because we are actually located in the cities where, um, we, where we say we are. We're not out, you know, far out in the suburbs or something. We're actually located within the cities, which gives us the proximity to the major companies who have their headquarters here um, so that our students can visit those companies, but also the, the companies come to us much more frequently. They're coming to us to recruit our students, um, to give presentations uh, on the opportunities that they are offering to our students in their companies, but also they're coming in as teachers, as visiting faculty. Speaking of faculty, we have 170 full-time research active um, faculty members. We have 800 affiliate and visiting professors. Those are the working professionals that I just spoke of who are coming into the classroom and sharing their hands-on experience with our students. Um, also very important uh, key number is that we have 68,000 alumni today who are working on every continent um, in every different type, type of industry. Those are going to be super important contacts for you. Um, during your studies, but afterwards, uh, in terms of finding internships, in terms of finding jobs, um, when you're looking to uh, launch a new product in uh, a new country, you can contact an alumni, an alumnus or an alumna uh, there. There's a, they're really valuable resources for you to have. And the fact that we have them all over the world certainly is, is an advantage. Um, just, and just for your information, ESCP Business School uh, currently has 8,000 students who are enrolled and they represent 118 different nationalities. One other thing about ESCP um, that is different from most other business schools is that um, as we were established in France, in France, the uh, and well, let's see, how do I say this? When, when we were founded, we were founded as a standalone business school. So we're not affiliated with a specific university, um, which gives us a lot more freedom to develop our curricula and develop our um, campuses the way that we would like. But um, it also, when you see, I, I mentioned this also because when you see the figure of 8,000 students currently enrolled, those are all business school students. You know, we're not part of a university. Um, to, just to give you, a, you know, kind of a, um, a relative uh, understanding of the size of the school. We like also to say that we have a history of excellence um, because we've been around for 200 years, but also because we have the best international accreditations and we've had them for a number of years. We uh, currently are accredited by the AACSB, which is the American um, educational body, as well as the EFMD, which is the European. We also do very well in the rankings. Um, currently, we are ranked number two for our master in finance and number six for our master in management and worldwide. Uh, and in The Economist, we are currently ranked number four. So who is the master in management for? It is for students who have a previous degree in any discipline. As you just heard from Samyak and Brennan, neither of them had previous business studies. Well, Brennan had some, but it wasn't a, uh, a major in business. So you can come in um, and join these uh, other business school students without having previous studies in business. You also don't need any previous work experience. Um, it's not required, uh, although, on average, students coming into the master cycle, we call it, of the master in management have about a year and a half worth of experience, but you don't have to have any in order to be, in order to join the program. But what you do need is you have to be internationally minded and you have to be, have, uh, be academically excellent. So with um, a very good academic record. 
in a nutshell, the Master in Management is a general management program with two special specializations minimum. Currently, we have uh, 58. Sorry, the slides needs to be updated. We just added some more. We currently we have 61 specializations on offer, um, and also over 100 electives to choose from. You can, when you join us, choose to study in two or three years in up to five countries. And I, I will go into details uh, about on those key figures in just a moment. Um, very important fact about the Master Management at ESCP is that internships are an integral part of the curriculum. You have to carry out internships or work uh, placements during your time uh, in the Master in Management in order to put into practice what you're learning. And so you have to have a minimum of nine months of, of internship experience by the time you graduate. Um, another fun fact about the master management is you can actually obtain, a, obtain up to five degrees without even leaving the ESCP campuses. And finally, you're going to be building your cultural intelligence with us by joining together with the 1200 students in the master management from around the world. So I would like you to join in with me and participate in this actively in the session by answering a couple of survey questions. The first one of which is, ESCP Master Management students are represented by over 50 nationalities from all the regions of the world. Which region are you from? Pretty simple question. Oh, thank you, I see a lot of you are have already participated, we're up to 80% already. We'll see if our audience today reflects the population of the MIM currently. Okay, we have 9% participation. I'll give you a couple more seconds to fill out that question for me. Okay, so interesting to the population today is a little bit different actually than, than uh, our information uh, sessions are usually um, in that we have, well, we have a majority of the people joining us today are from Europe, which also is true in, our, in a typical master in management class or cohort. Asia is represented by 29% 29, uh, 29 of you today. Africa, a small percentage. South America as well, and no one from North America. Well, Brennan, you did not bring all your friends to the session today. Neither did I, by the way. I'm also from the United States. <laughs> okay. And I lost my pie chart. There's a pie chart normally on the slide that shows you the breakdown of students in the MIM batch. I'm sorry about that, but I, I'm pretty familiar with the pie chart, so I can tell you all about it. Um, so 78% of our students are from European countries and 22% are from the rest of the world. Um, of those 78%, about 45% are coming from France, 15% um, from Italy, uh, and the remainder of the Europeans are coming from our other campus countries, which are um, Germany, Spain, and the United Kingdom. As far as Asia is concerned, we have, of course, very big cohorts from India and China. Sorry, I say, of course, just because in business education, pretty much around the world, there are big cohorts um, from India and China. And that is, that is true with uh, ESCP as well. And then we, but we do also have uh, about 3%, 3 to 4, 5% of our student population is from North America, not reflected in you guys today, but thankfully Brenna and I are here to represent that, that segment. Um, as well as um, Latin America and the Middle East. So what happens to our students when they graduate? This is kind of the bottom line, isn't it? When you're coming to a business school, you want to know that you're going to have a job and uh, hopefully the job of your dreams. 
Um, but the good news is when you graduate from the ESC from the ESCP Master Management, you have a 97 per, so, sorry 97 percent chance of finding a job within three months of graduation. Uh, 53 percent of our students are even employed before graduation, uh, and 47 percent are working outside of their home country. All of those are pretty significant statistics that are telling you, um, number one, obviously that you're going to, going to find a job. Um, within three months of graduation, that we are providing uh, a very international um, education, which is giving you lots of opportunities to live, learn, and work in different countries. Um, so much so that almost half of our student um, graduates are working outside of their, their home country. And uh, with the over half of them being employed before graduation is largely due to the fact that we have the internships integrated into the curriculum of the program so that um, more often than not, students are finishing up their studies with an internship that then often turns into a full-time position. Uh, in terms of salary, currently our graduates on average are, are earning just under 52,000 euros per year as a starting salary. And the places that, that they're working, the jobs that they're doing, the, the advantage of a, a program such as ours is that we're giving you an overview of um, management in general so that you are uh, able to work in all different types of sectors and all different types of job functions. Um, there are some that stand out from the crowd as shown, as shown in, in this chart though. And the top three in terms of industry sectors are consulting, finance, and technology. Um, and those are followed by uh, fast moving cons consumer goods or FMCG, luxury goods and agricultural business. In terms of job functions, uh, lots of students are working as consultants, which makes sense because consulting is also our biggest industry sector that students are joining when they first graduate. 17% in finance, 11% uh, in marketing, 11% in business development, 4% in the C-suite. Uh, C-suite, if you're not familiar with the term, is CEO, CFO, CMO, so Chief Executive Officer, Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Financial Officer, etc. Um, those students uh, are obviously not joining the, um, the top 100 companies in the world. They are usually in joining, start either starting up their own company or joining startups. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of project managers uh, who are uh, students who, who are taking a job, sorry, a project management job upon graduation. Just to give you an idea of some of our top employers um, at ESCP, these are all well-known brands, almost all of them are very well-known companies, very international companies. These are companies that are all have um, are located and or have major um, centers within our countries. Although not all of our graduates are, are working in, in the ESCP campus countries, um, the, ma the majority of them start their career in one of the ESCP campus countries. Uh, and the, the companies that they're joining are representative of the industries, obviously, um, where our students are most often working upon graduation. So we have lots of consulting companies uh, in this group. We have um, banks who are representing the finance industry, um, also technology companies such as Google, Amazon, Rocket Internet, which you may not be familiar with, but Rocket Internet is actually a uh, Berlin-based company that was um, way back when an ESCP startup. So it's a company that's grown to such a size that it hires uh, a lot of our students. Okay, I have a second question for you. Just so Brennan and Samyak and I know who we're speaking with. Let's see, there we go. Can you let us know where you are in your studies for a in your search for a master's program? I wanted to know if you are, you haven't decided yet where you want to study, if you've chosen business or management as your field of study. 
you've started or submitted an application or you've um, to a business school or you've started or submitted an, an application to ESCP. Okay, great. Looks like lots of people are participating. Thank you so much again. Okay, I'll just give you another couple of seconds. 93% participate, participation. Okay, looks like everybody has pretty much voted. So just so everybody knows um, who is participating in the session today, uh, we have um, a vast majority who have already chosen business or management as your field of study. Some haven't decided yet, and that's fair enough that, that um, we are absolutely here to answer your, those questions as well. 12% um, have started or submitted an application to a business school and 18% of you have started <clears throat> excuse me, or submit an application to ESCP. Thanks so much for sharing that. So now let's talk a, a little bit, um, go into a little bit more detail ab uh, about the curriculum or the learning journey of the Master in Management at ESCP. The program actually can be a two-year or a three-year program, depending on what you're looking for. We have actually an optional pre-master year um, that every year we have, um, let's see, 500 students or so who join the pre-master year. Most of those are from a very specific segment coming from um, France uh, and because in France there is um, a system of education that's a bit different from the rest of Europe and the rest of the world actually in that, that there is a system of, of what they call grande école which you're, you may or may not have heard of but in any case um, in order to um, the grande école program is a program typically that, that, that lasts three years Students come spend two years in preparatory school and then they join the pre master year. So, um, at ESCP, in our pre master year, we have about 400 students who are joining from the preparatory school and another 100 who are joining because um, either because they um, have not studied, studied business in the past. Um, for example, we have students who have, are engineers or who are coming from the humanities who have not studied business in the past, um, and they decide to join the pre-master year to get a full year of business studies before they join the master cycle. But then there are some students who only have two years of university studies and decide to join the master in, uh, or the, the, yeah, the master in management in the pre-master year as their final year of their bachelor studies. Although, yeah, they don't get a bachelor degree. In any case, you can cho cho choose to join in either the pre-master year or the first master year, master year one, which we also call M1. Um, in the M1 year, you're going to have core courses. Um, again, a general management approach to um, this education. Uh, so what you're going to be learning in the four courses are you're going to be learning about HR, you're going to be learning about strategy, you're going to be learning about finance and marketing. Um, and uh, to give you an overview of how a company functions. Uh, after that, you're going to be taking a deeper dive into specific job functions or um, sectors or industry sectors. So uh, the specializations that you're going to be taking are going to take place after semester one. So as of semester two, three, and four, um, so that you can get a, um, the general overview of, ma of management, as well as that more specific deep dive into those topics. And I'll show you more about those topics later. But in addition to those, the core courses and the specializations, we also have a series of seminars that you will be taking. 
uh, in the first year, there's one on digital transformation and then one on dis, um, Europe. It's called Designing Europe, which is a learning expedition that students take to Brussels, which of course is the headquarters of the EU. In Master Year Two, you have a seminar on responsible leadership that teaches a lot about soft skills. And then finally, um, a seminar on, uh, that is a simulation of a business strategy. Lots of choices at the master management, um, two of which are your study location and the language in which you study. Uh, as both Samyak and Brennan mentioned when they talked about what they've done with us so far, um, they have studied in different campuses. Um, and you will be able to do the same uh, if you choose to join us. So uh, you can study in as many as five different locations if you join us in the pre-master year, um, which means that you would choose one country for your pre-master year or one city, and that would be either Paris or Turin. Uh, and then when you get to the master years, you can actually change campus every semester. Uh, Brennan, it actually looks like you're on that track, aren't you? You did your first semester in Turin, your second semester in Paris. Third semester was where again? Well, I'm on my gap right now here in Paris. Right. And then third semester, you're planning on doing? An exchange. An exchange, okay. And then fourth semester, do you know where you're going to go yet? I'd love to go to Berlin, but I will see what specializations are offered where at the time. Okay, fair enough. Well, that brings up a good point. Um, and that is, um, so the choices uh, that students are making are where they want to study um, and what language they want to study. And you can take up take the whole program in English if you'd like, but you can choose if you so desire to study in Spanish, French, um, or German uh, on the on the related campuses. Brendan, did you study in English or French in Paris? Um, I've been doing English. Yeah. Even though you're fluent in French, I know you. Yeah. Well, my my internship was in French, so that helps. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but the the way that you choose locations actually. Um, is dependent upon, well, actually, maybe you guys could tell me. How, um, Samir, how did you decide on the, the locations where you wanted to study? So for me, I, I didn't want to move much. So I I thought the Paris campus, I mean, it, it is the central campus. So I thought maybe let's go and have one year in Paris campus. And also my specialization in consulting dynamics, it, I was getting a right match there. And then I thought of moving to the London market because um, um, because of the language and I wanted to learn investment banking as well. So mine was like one year Paris, one year London. And if a gap in between, that's okay. So I took a gap. I mean, that plan worked well with me. Okay, and your final semester, I think you said, go ahead. Yeah, it, it's going to be London. And in the final semester, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, going for an exchange because uh, I mean, I'll still be connected with the London campus, but I can still go for exchange. So I'm planning for that. Okay. And probably I'll look for uh, St. Gallens or, or maybe in US. Okay, very good. Um, the seminars that uh, I mentioned that are part and an integral part of the curriculum, one of them is actually a highlight uh, of the master management normally. Unfortunately for both Brennan and Samyak, they were unable to take this learning expedition. Uh, during their first master year because of COVID. We had to cancel it last year, which was really a shame um, because it is an experience, it is a pretty unique experience where all of our students actually go to Brussels and um, conduct negotiation uh, simulations within the European Parliament, within the Parliament, sorry, within the Euro European Parliament. Oof, I'm having a hard time today. Um, of course, the importance of this is regardless of whether where you live and work in the world, the EU is going to have an impact on your business life, well, on your life in general, um, but certainly on your business life and learning about how the EU works from the inside is 
is, is really crucial. And it's something that's quite unique to ESUP. Um, it's something that we started doing several years ago now, 12 years ago, I believe. And um, it's, it's, it's an interesting experience also because we bring in very high level speakers. Um, in, the pre, in the last session, which was two years ago, we had Michel Barnier, who um, actually is an ESCP alum and who was also uh, in charge of the negotiations um, about Brexit between the UK and the EU. So it was really interesting to see what he had to, to say about his experience um, uh, doing that. Time for you guys to play again. And that is with the question of dual, dual degrees. Would you like to take a dual degree? What is a dual degree, you ask? Well, we'll be explaining it to you, don't worry. But in the meantime, thank you for playing. Okay. I'll give you another minute or so. We have 90% people have participated so far. Okay, great. I'm going to end the poll now. So uh, you're split evenly between yes and maybe, um, and that's fair enough. 10% are you're happy with one, one degree. That's fair enough as well. But now let me tell you what we have to offer you at ESCP. Another, it's, it's, it's also very, very unique to ESCP as in that when you join the master in management, you can actually obtain up to five different degrees. Um, and that is even without leaving the ESCP campuses. If you start in the pre-master year, then you can get the um, Loria Magistrale, and I apologize for my pronunciation for you Italian speakers out there, um, that is delivered in Italy as it's a, the master degree and recognized by the Italian Ministry of Education. Um, if you join, uh, and then, yeah, it, it, uh, but only if you join in the pre-master year can you get the degree recognized in Italy. If you join in the M1 or the first master year, um, then you can um, receive degrees in any of the countries that you study in uh, by doing one simple thing. When you first arrive on campus, we are going to ask you, would you like to have any uh, additional degrees and you say yes because you know that you'd like to study in Berlin or London or Paris or um, Madrid. Actually, I just said, yeah, let me say that again. You, uh, you say yes, you want an additional degree. In addition to the, the French Master in Management Grand École because everyone who comes to, to ESCP receives the French Master in Management Grand École. Um, we will ask you a question, would you like a degree in addition to the French degree? And you say yes, because I want to study in Madrid or Berlin or London or all three. Uh, and then you're registered to receive the dual degree recognized in those countries. In order to get that degree, all you have to do pretty much, there are some specifications for the London degree, but pretty much all you have to do is study on, on that respective campus. So classes take place on our campuses. You don't have to go to a partner school um, and you can receive a degree that is recognized in those countries. About over 50% of our students are taking advantage of this. Um, about 35% are receiving three degrees or more when they graduate. It's something that is, could be very valuable to you if you um, know, for example, that you would like to work in, um, in Germany uh, and because the German employers really like to see that, uh, that their, the master degree um, is recognized in their country. Same is true within the others. 
um, within the other countries. So it, it can be something very valuable um, to your future employment. And again, very unique at ESCP. I don't know of any other school that offers that. Um, so we already spoke about choosing your course and your learning location. We haven't spoken much about the specializations, um, except both Samyak and Brennan mentioned the specializations that they've taken so far. Uh, actually, maybe I could ask you guys to jump in again. Uh, maybe Samyak, you go first this time. Tell me why you chose the specializations that you did so far. Yes, so I chose uh, consulting dynamics and practices uh, in the Paris campus. And um, why I chose this first, the course structure really amazed me. Um, we had to do this. Um, I was engaged with a, a Israel, Israeli startup on a, on a cryptocurrency project. It was a market entry strategy. So, I mean, you get those live um, projects with, with real companies. So that, that excited me. And I also wanted to do consulting in general. So this course was a perfect mix of kind of a practical knowledge and kind of a theoretical knowledge of consulting. And that is why I chose it. And while I did consulting and I did work for this company, I realized that I need to have a, a little knowledge of finance as well, as I wanted to do some mergers and acquisitions cases in consulting. And that is why now I'm doing an investment banking specialization. I will do a I will do the specialization in the next semester. So it completes my kind of consulting portfolio that, okay, he knows consulting and he knows some little finance. So okay. those are the reasons for me to choose it. Okay, makes sense. And what about you, Brennan? Um, so I chose my uh, specialization because, I mean, I, I have a very particular set of interests. And when I was reading through the specialization list, I read one that had all of the words that I, they just were perfect for me. And so I knew I had to do it, um, which was research impact studies and consulting because I love research and social science and I'm very interested in social impact. So impact studies was huge. And then I'm also very interested in consulting. So combining all of those three into one was just kind of a perfect combination. Um, and I, I think going forward for specializations, I want to diversify my studies a little bit and, and try to find something that I haven't had a chance to explore as much. So if there's something available in economics um, or, or one of the, I guess, things that I've avoided learning more about, such as finance, might be very useful. So uh, <laughs> I'll be looking into that as I go forward. <laughs> Fair enough. So here, of course, we're showing only uh, a few of the specializations that we have uh, on offer. If you'd like to see the full list, then you can please check our website or our brochures. Um, so I asked you about dual degrees, uh, and then I started talking about specializations. What, what's up with the dual degrees? Uh, we've talked to you about the dual degrees that you can get by studying um, in, our, in our own campuses. Um, but we do also offer dual degrees with our international partners who are located all around the world. If uh, you do decide to take a dual degree with one of our international partners, it actually lasts a full year. So that would be two semesters. Um, as um, both Brennan and Samyak mentioned, they're interested in doing an exchange program. Those last one semester. Um, if you would like to do a dual degree in something other than management or some other than business, we do have that on offer as well. Uh, so if you are interested in engineering, in art management, fashion and luxury management, hospitality management, uh, international relations, you can get a, a, a second degree. Um, so in addition to your master management degree, you can get a second degree by coming to ESCP at the Master of Management. Uh, in that case, what you will do is you will um, apply for uh, the dual degree in the partner institution during your first master year. Um, and the application usually consists of, firstly, you have to apply uh, internally. So you have to uh, inform ESCP and the international relations team that you would like to apply for a dual degree at, for example, um, MIT. Um, 
And then if we say, okay, we wanna present you as one of our um, students applying for this dual degree to MIT, you will then have an interview with them and perhaps some additional information that they'd like to have. Um, but just know that that is an option as well as you can study management at ESCP and also come out with a degree in art management or um, in hospitality. Professional experience is an integral part of the master management curriculum. Um, you've heard both Brennan and Samyak talk about gap semesters that they're doing this year with their internships. Um, they're doing that because for a couple of reasons, I'm gonna say this on behalf of you guys, you can jump in if I'm wrong. And that is firstly, because it's part, you have to do internships as part of the curriculum. It's necessary in order to graduate, but also because you wanted to maybe look deeper at a specific industry or perhaps a specific job function um, that you are interested in doing more, um, doing, doing something in later. Uh, is that true? Actually, Brennan, can you tell me why, what um, are you planning on doing like business strategy later, like you're doing in your internship now, or is it something you're, you just wanted to explore more of? Yes, so I was, I mean, I'm interested in, in strategy generally, um, but I was more attracted to the non-for-profit side of the internship that I was working at because I want to try to bring together traditional business kind of strategy, expertise, consulting, ideally into the non-for-profit sector when working in social impact. And um, generally speaking too, this is maybe a little more specific. In France, I found um, some other students have also recommended that your first internship tends to be at a smaller organization. So in this case, mine was a small kind of startup level, non-for-profit. And then a second internship, you then might go uh, focus on something that you're, uh, is one of more of the reach positions, let's say like a prestige uh, consulting firm, something like that. You, you might be more likely by building up your internship experience that way. So that was kind of guiding my uh, choices there. Okay. That hasn't necessarily been Samyak's experience though, I think, right? No, Samyak's just you a superstar. Right in with both, both feet with Blah Blah Car, which is a pretty big company. We just celebrate their 100 million customer, is that correct? Yes, yes, you're correct, but <laughs> that's, that's okay. I was uh, fortunate enough that I applied on the right time at the, at the right moment. But yeah, even uh, just like Brennan said, uh, for me, it was uh, majorly I wanted an European experience. I've worked in India and things work very differently here. And in Europe, things work differently. And I wanted to have a first-hand experience. And uh, I mean, I, uh, I wanted to do consulting, but I really don't have much experience in consulting. So I chose to explore first. And then uh, just like Brennan said, in the second internship, I'm going to be very specific that where I want to go and what I want to do. So this was these were my reasons. Actually, speaking of consulting, um, and this is a little bit off my, my usual uh, presentation, since both of you uh, are a part of a student society that's in consulting, aren't you? Um, would, would one of you like to tell us uh, about that? Oh, I, I think we both would, um, but how much time do we have? <laughs> we don't want to hijack the meeting to pitch. Just a little, just a couple words about, because I don't really in this, I don't usually talk about student um, societies at all. So this is kind of an opportunity just to mention one that, because I know both of you are uh, in part of it. Yeah, so um, I'll start and then let Samyak say a few words because I'm, I'm the head of HR. So if there's any recruitment questions about our specific society, happy to answer those. Um, but we are, um, a branch of 180 Degrees Consulting, which is an international uh, non-for-profit consultancy that's run through university campuses. Um, and we were founded here a few years ago at the Paris campus, but now we're present on all campuses so that students can have a chance to get involved in some real hands-on consulting experience, as well as at the same time, um, creating a social impact. And as far as more generally student life goes and student association goes, different campuses tend to have um, some different student associations depending on the interests of the students that are there. Some of which are available across campuses like ours, others of which are specific to the campus. 
Um, and each different campus comes with its own unique kind of way of approaching that student life culture. So um, having been in Turin and Paris, I can speak to those, whereas I'm sure I know in London, there's a very active student community as well. Um, so yeah, Samyak, did you have anything you want to add? I, I think you have, you have uh, explained it all. And uh, I would just like to say that uh, before entering to uh, a, a big company, a big consulting company, this this is one of the one of my first hand experiences that I had in consulting. And I mean, 180 degree consulting is very professional in terms of doing things. We we have some real clients and some real clients and we, we work on some really, really good projects. So my experience has been really great with it. That's it, that I think. Otherwise, we're going to take the whole meeting and talk about 180 degrees consulting. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We'll do that. We'll do a separate session on that. Thanks, guys. Um, so back to professional experience uh, that are that is not student society. It's very specific to this, uh, the career services that we offer. Um, we have do we do have a careers team uh, careers teams on every campus that offer support in things like um, coaching. They do boot camps, they do careers fairs, they do company present, they organize company presentations where companies come in um, and share the uh, opportunities that they have at their company to our students. Um, they also help with CV and LinkedIn profile development, with mock interviews, um, with your pitch, um, all those things that are really going to help uh, our students to perfect their job search and help them to land the job that they're looking for. Or and or internship, of course. You're usually starting with an internship and then building up to a full-time position. Okay, hard data. So fees, we do charge money for you to come and study with us um, for the 2020 intake. So starting in September, 2022, uh, the fees are per year 19,000 euros for EU citizens and 22,700 for non-EU citizens. Uh, ESCP does offer scholarships. Uh, for non-EU citizens, those are merit scholarships that are worth 25 to 100% of the first year's tuition fees. The merit scholarships are actually awarded upon admission, so it's not something that you need to apply for. For EU citizens, we offer need-based scholarships um, that run anywhere from 10 to 80% of your first year's tuition fees, and those scholarships you do need to apply for. You apply for them after you have been admitted. Um, I always like to tell students to look uh, around because there are lots of scholarship sources that are hiding there. Uh, and here I'm listing a few sources that you may want to consult. Um, generally speaking, you're going to be looking for scholarship monies in the countries where you're studying, um, as well as your home country, because there are often schemes that in your home country that um, will help uh, are built for bringing, you know, helping students go to study in, um, in France, for example, or in Germany or in Spain or whatever. So um, please do take a look around and see what scholarship monies you might have available to you. As far as admissions are concerned, and I'm sure we've already had this question in the Q&A. I haven't been keeping up to be honest because I've been, I haven't been keeping up yet. I will be getting there at the end of the session, but I'm sure everyone has asked, what is your minimum GMAT? But I, so I will answer it now, and I'm sure that Brennan and Samyak have already answered it. We do not have a minimum GMAT. We do not have a minimum GRE. We do not have a minimum any test score. Um, we are looking at the whole application. We are looking at where you studied, what you studied, what your grades were. We're looking at your essays, we're looking at your CV, um, and then we're deciding on whether we want to meet you for an interview. Generally speaking, that's how the admissions process happens. Now, very specifically, admissions at ESCP um, have we have very we have several different choices <laughs> or admission or admissions paths um, that are based on where you have done your previous studies and to which year you're applying to the program. So, if you want to apply to the pre-master year and your previous studies are outside of France, you will be going through an admissions path called the pre-master admissions test, um, where testing and interviews take place on the Turin campus. So in order to assess your um, application and invite you, decide whether we want to invite you to the interview is, we want to see your English test score. We, we accept IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, and Cambridge. 
we want to see your university transcripts, uh, your diploma or your certificate of enrollment, uh, and a CV. If we like what we see in this particular case, we're going to invite you to campus to take a standardized test that is similar to a GMAT. It's called SHL or the ESCP test. Um, and we're also going to do a motiv motivational interview with you. So if, the, if you're in this case, you can, uh, applications are opening in the next 24 hours. Um, and if you have asked us, um, signed up, to, so we'll be sending out emails to you, letting you know that applications are open within the next 24 hours, and they will be open until May of 2022. If you're applying to the master program and you have previous studies outside of France, outside of France, sorry, you have two choices. Number one is called the international direct admissions, and that's where you're applying exclusively and directly to ESCP. The other choice that you have is called join a school in France, which is a consortium of five different business schools with campuses in France. The process is almost exactly the same. Uh, and we don't have a preference. It's up, it's up to you as to which you, uh, which path is better for you. Um, basically, uh, we need the same thing as I just described. So we need um, a, a standardized test, which is a GMAT, a GRE, a CAT, which is the one that often um, engineering schools in India use, um, CAT or Taj Maj, or the ESCP test, the SHL. Then the English language exam, your university transcripts, um, et cetera. Uh, and then we will invite you to a motivational interview. I need to update this slide because I still see the word Skype on there. I apologize for that. Skype is a couple of years old now. I don't even know if anybody uses Skype anymore. Um, in any case, both of these applications um, paths are open or will be imminently, as I said, in the next 24 hours for the international direct admissions, and they will be open until the spring of 2022. Um, as concerns the international direct admissions for um, where you apply directly to ESCP, if you cannot provide a GMAT, etc., then you can request to take the ESCP test, which happens on campus. Um, so that is a possibility for students who are applying directly to ESCP. For students with previous studies in France, Samyak, you had a question? Uh, yes, so it is a question of, for uh, a lot of students. So what, what exactly is the procedure of uh, like how to apply for taking the ESCP SHL test? I mean, how do students do that if they don't have a GMAT or TH major? Yeah, it's actually within the application. If they, once they go to okay. the application platform, um, they get to the section that talks about uploading their test. That's where you actually upload um, just a, a form saying that you would like to take the SHL test instead of supplying a GMAT, a GRE, or a Taj Maj. Okay, so uh, once you have filled the form, uh, are you required to give the SHL test first and then they screen your application or they screen your application and then you give your SHL test for a final uh, screening? Excellent question. The, the application is actually screened before we have the result of the test because um, in order to take the test, normally you have to come to campus. Currently, we're still offering them online until the, uh, until the end of the year. We'll see what happens in January. But normally you have to come to take campus to take the test. And since you're coming to campus, we have you do the interview as well at the same time. Otherwise people could potentially have to travel twice. Okay, yeah, thanks. that makes yeah. sense? Yeah. Thank you for that question. So for students with previous studies in France, um, we have another path called the Concours d'admission direct, uh, which is exactly the same as the other ones, um, except for uh, in the second round, we are going to be testing you in uh, English as well as a second language. The applications for this path, however, are not yet open. Usually they open in early December. Um, and you will be, if you want uh, to be updated about that, then you need to check in on our website to see when the applications are open. Okay. 
So um, just uh, to wrap it all up, hopefully there are some benefits that you will have um, learned about as takeaways. And they are that when you join the Master in Management at ESCP, you're going to learn to think critically about business management and ethical issues with a socially responsible approach. You're going to build and enhance your career plans through specialized course options and in-company work experience. And you're going to strengthen your ability to live and work in a highly multicultural and international environment, which I can't, and I cannot emphasize enough um, how valuable that is, all those things are to employers. Great, so thanks so much for listening to the presentation segment of the session today. Now I'm going to switch over to the Q&A. I know that my two ambassadors have been answering all of your questions furiously um, as best they can. So I'm going to start taking them live um, as well. So it looks like nobody is taken yet. Juliette de Calon has asked, sorry, Juliette has asked a question. When can we take the ESCP test if we're applying for the first round? Is it online or in person? Um, since then, I've sort of answered this question. I'll do it quickly, Juliette, and that is you can take the ESCP test um, once we have asked you to, once we have vetted your application and asked you to come to the interview. So it, it is part of the second um, step of the application process. Uh, and those, the dates upon which that happens, uh, which that happens, um, are listed on our website. So I hope that helps. Um, Sasha asked, uh, I am French, but studying in the UK. Concerning the management test, I don't know which test is better, Taj Maj or the internal management test. My first choice is ESCP, and I want to optimize my chances to integrate the MIM. Uh, okay, so as far as which test is better between the Taj Maj or the internal management test, we have no preference. Uh, that's absolutely up to you. Uh, as you may know, the Taj Maj is in French, uh, and if you're a native French speaker, it might be easier for you to take that. The internal or the uh, ESCP or SHL, we have lots of names for it, test um, is also uh, a possibility. The, it's really up to you. Um, what I would suggest is you take a look at the practice test for Taj Maj. Um, <clears throat> as well as our internal test and see, see which one you think uh, better fits your skills. Um, Ricardo, I'm answering these first one guys because I assume that you haven't, oh no, never mind. I'll start sending them off to you as well. I assume that you can answer these questions as well. Ricardo is asking, I lived two years in England and took the GCSE exams there. Specifically, I took the equivalent of a C1 in my English GCSE. Um, Ricardo, I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> Brennan or Simeac, do you know what he's asking? No, that's why you didn't answer. Um, if you're asking whether that's turn, that works as an equivalent for our English exams, I would say no. We need to see one of the exams that we request. Yeah, actually, I think that question was written out twice and we, we had answered the other uh, version of it. So Okay, so hopefully I answered the same way that you did. Yes. <laughs> actually, one thing I didn't mention, sorry, when I was going over admissions, um, and that is that you are exempt from the, um, ex the English test if you have studied in an English speaking country. So that means um, if you study in the UK, in the US, in Ireland, in India, in Canada, in Australia, etc., then you don't need to show us an, an English language exam. If you have studied in English, but in a non-English speaking country, such as Italy, such as um, the Netherlands, such as Sweden, we need to see the English language exam. We really, we really need to see that you have um, the level of English that we expect at ESCP. So Simona, um, the direct application is asking, sorry, the direct application portal has not opened yet. However, the last date to apply, okay, I already answered this question, Simona. 
Um, the application portal will be open within the next 24 hours. And you wants to know if it would be possible to have a profile ev evaluation made. And any of the answer to that question is absolutely yes. Um, what you need to do is contact one of our admissions advisors. Uh, and you know, given your name, I assume you're in Italy. Um, I may be wrong, but assuming that you are in Italy, then you would need to contact our Turing campus. And that is, um, you can reach that in, at NIM. Let's see, where can I put that so everybody can see it? Uh, you can't see it in the chat. It's MIM Turin at ESCP.eu. Pretty easy. All together, MIM Turin and MIM Turin at ESCP.eu. And he, they will happy to um, evaluate your CV. <laughs> Janasri, I don't know if you guys skipped this question or not. Uh, Janasri is saying, according to Wikipedia, ESCP has lost its Triple Crown accreditation. Did you guys skip this question? It's okay, I can answer it. Um, we did not lose our Triple Crown. It is true that we do not have a Triple Crown accreditation. Um, we did not lose it, however, we chose to not be accredited by one of the third, the third, the third accrediting body, which is AMBA, um, because of many reasons, but it was our choice. I don't want to get into any politically incorrect statements here, but we just didn't like the way um, that AMBA was conducting its accreditation sessions. Let's just leave it at that. But we, so we didn't lose it. We chose to not have it anymore. Um, let's see. Shirin is asking if we apply application fee waivers. And I'm sorry to tell you that we do not. Um, we, it's very expensive for us to process application applications and we just cannot uh, offer waivers to, for that. Um, Ariana is asking, um, can we apply before we get our GMAT score and take it and add it at a later date? Samek, do you want to answer that? Um, uh, I don't think we can. Uh, Ariana, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I don't think we can uh, do that. I mean, you need to have your GMAT score when you are applying. You cannot update it on a, on a later date. Absolutely. Zinyi, and I apologize for the pronunciation, is asking, is it difficult to apply to a dual degree? What is the percentage of the students who have the opportunity to apply? What qualifications are required? Um, neither of you have applied for a dual degree, if I'm not mistaken. Um, shall I just go ahead and answer that? Or Brennan, do, would you like to answer? No, I, I think it's probably better for you. <laughs> okay. It's not difficult to apply. Um, you can, uh, anyone, everyone is open to apply. What you're, what we're looking at is, what we're looking at and what our partner is looking at is your academic results at, while you're at ESCP. They're looking, they're often looking at a, it depends on where, but often they're looking at a GMAT as well and or an English exam. Um, and, and after that, it's a question of the interview. So, um, but everybody is absolutely open to apply for a dual degree. Okay, here's one for you guys. Sherry is asking, can you tell us more about the interview process? Who would like to take that one? I can take that one. Great. So um, for me, the interview lasted for uh, around 30 to 14 uh, minutes. And uh, they were specifically asking me about my motivation and how, uh, I mean, they were, uh, they were more interested in knowing my story, that how did I reach from, uh, from um, engineering background in deciding that I want to do ma master's in management? And how did I, why Europe, why France? 
and then uh, my motivation in uh, doing consulting so it was it was like a conversation not really a grilling uh, interview i mean if you are there in the interview they really like your profile and they really want you to be in so it is more of a conversation in knowing that uh, whether what what are your motivations and uh, why are you doing these things so it but it uh, experience overall was really good and brennan if you would like to add anything to it uh... so that's a pretty fair summary yeah it was a relatively conversational just kind of chat yeah that's the approach that we take we don't we don't want we want people to feel comfortable we want to learn uh, as much as we can about somebody about the values of the person about who they are and what they're looking for in 20 to 30 minutes 20 to 30 minutes as we can so we don't want to make you totally stressed out by you know shooting really tough questions at you um we yeah it's, it's it is kind of a chatty conversational approach depending on who was interviewing you i mean these are human beings so um you know not every human being behaves the same but it really is um it is more of a a discussion rather than you know you're being battered with questions um we want to make sure that we can help you reach your goals and we want to make sure that you are the right person to help us reach ours which is to create a positive learning environment for our students ayush is asking okay i've said that three times already so i'm not going to answer that again um toma is asking do you please have the hmm. toma i don't understand what you mean <laughs> sorry the weightage, perhaps? Do you please have the weightage for selection and MIM for French students? Uh, Tom, I'm sure. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you mean. Um, I think that you're going to have to rephrase and or reach out to um, our admissions uh, our admissions advisor for the Concours d'admission directe, which is for students who have studied in France. Um, in which case, Thomas, I would recommend that you write to mim paris at escp.eu. That's their email address. Okay, mim, M I M, paris at escp.eu. Magdalena is asking How do you interpret excellent education background? I come from a country which does, does not use GPA. Um, I'll go ahead and answer that, Magdalena. We we also don't use GPA because the GPA is changes from country to country. I mean, the the scale for a GPA in the United States is different from the one used in other countries. Um, I know that because I'm from the United States, uh, and not everybody uses a GPA in India. You use percentile, so it's it's something that we can't we we don't go by that. What we what we do is we take a look at the actual university where you've studied. Um, the subjects that you've studied, and then your overall grades. And we, we know what, what happens um, from country to country. Uh, so we know how to interpret your, your educational background. Um, Zinlan, it's a very specific question. And that is in M2, are the art management lessons only given in French? Actually, the art management lessons are with a dual degree program with Sotheby's um, uh, School of Art Management in New York. So they are given in English. Uh, NEO is asking, it's saying, I have already one recommend, recommendation letter signed by the employer of my two months long internship. Is it possible to apply with it? Um, so yes, we are happy to take, I, that's one thing I didn't mention, uh, for the international direct admissions path, we do not require recommendation letters, but we're happy to receive them. You have a place where you can upload them on the platform. Um, for the uh, join a school in France admissions path, we require 
recommendation letters. Generally speaking, we want both of them to be academic reference letters. Uh, so, um, and the format for that is open. Uh, so you would ask for a letter from your uh, the, the faculty member who knows you well, um, and, and so that you can upload that to the platform. I hope that helps. Sasha is asking if the optional year is available for BSc and management students. Uh, Sasha, you need to be more specific. Um, the optional year is available to everyone. Uh, specifically BSc and management students, I'm not sure what you mean. If you mean, yeah, I, you need to be more specific about that. I'm not gonna try and guess what you mean because I think we'd be wasting everybody's time and we have a lot of questions. So I'm trying to go quickly. Um, okay, you guys have to help me with this one. Selby is asking, which, which languages do you learn in semester one? I don't know. So uh, in some, it depends really. You can take yeah. German, you can take French. In the Paris campus, we have French and German available, also English. So these three languages that I know, I learned French for the for for my two semesters. And Brennan, did you take uh, any other language or? Yeah, it, it depends on the campus. Different campuses have different offerings. So in Turin, you can learn Italian, um, and in in Spain, you can learn Spanish, for example, and then there there might be a couple other offerings depending on the campus, but I'm not super familiar outside of the ones I chose to study, which were German and Italian. Okay, that's generally speaking, and again, generally speaking, my understanding is that uh, you can study all of our campus country languages on all of our campuses. So if you're in Turin, you should have been able to study French as well. Um, that should have been one of the offerings. Uh, I do know, however, that in some campuses, we also offer Russian, Chinese, and Arabic, um, but it depends on the campus. But I think probably the most important thing that you, that Selby wants to know is that you can study the language of the country you're living in. I would imagine that's, a, that's the most important question and definitely um, you can do so. Um, sorry, I realize I haven't been doing this right. One second, I need to catch up with myself. Um, sorry, I just lost my place. And oops. Mitten. Oh boy. Uh, sorry, oh boy, and, I, and we're all native English speakers here. See so yeah, how we can answer this. So Minton is saying, as you said that we should get 15 out of 20 if our university is English speaking. I didn't say that, but we do have that written in specifications that you can download from our website. Should we try to score more than 15 in the sector by additionally giving English tests to increase our chances into getting an admit? My advice on that, is when you look at, um, we have detailed inf information on the weighting of the different um, sec sections of the application. So um, for the GMAT or the management test and the English test, those both have five to 10% weight in your overall grade of your application. Much more important is your university transcript and the interview. So if you really do want to increase your chances of um, increasing your score by taking an English test and perhaps raising your grade from 15 to 17, you can do so, but, but the overall impact is going to be minimal. My advice would be to take that into consideration um, uh, as to whether you want to take the Go to the go to the extent of taking an English test if you don't need it. But voilà. Marie is saying, if we choose an apprenticeship, do we have to study at a minimum of two campuses? 
Uh, Marie, someone always has to ask the dreaded apprenticeship question, <laughs> which I don't talk about in this presentation. There are um, a few more too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to start at it. Um, so a, a brief overview of the apprenticeship at ESCP Business School is that it is available to students who are either have an EU nationality or have a carte de séjour in France. If you don't meet, meet either of those criteria, then you may not take the apprenticeship course. I know, Samyak, we talked about this the other day. Those are the rules as of today. As you, yeah. um, so if you do meet those criteria, lucky you, you can apply for the apprenticeship track. The apprenticeship track for students who are entering into the master cycle, so for those who did not do the pre-master year in Paris, you are eligible to take an apprenticeship in your second year of master's. So you would apply for the apprenticeship program in your first year. This is new, okay? This information I'm giving you is new, it's changing. And I think my, the website isn't even updated um, because I don't have the final information. But um, as of this year, you may the apprenticeship track will be offered to students entering the master level M1 during their M2 year. So the full year of M2, you can work at a company while you're studying. It's a super intensive course because you're doing the same studies as a normal student and it's just completely condensed, but super, very, very um, an amazing learning experience because you're working and, and learning at the same time. Um, you're also earning a salary because the company is hiring you as a, an apprentice is paying you and they're paying for your tuition fees. So financially, it's very advantageous. Um, the difficulties or the hard parts are, first, you have to be eligible, as I said. So you have to either have an EU nationality or have a cap de séjour. And you have to find an apprenticeship contract. So you have to find a company that will is ready to hire you as an apprentice. Um, so you know, that's not given to everybody. Um, in order to be hired as an apprentice, you generally have to speak fluent French. In 95% of the cases, you have to speak fluent French. Um, and if you apply to the apprenticeship program and we uh, want, and when we take you, we can help you find a, a contract. But, you know, all of those things are, um, uh, yeah, those are, there are things that uh, make it, a bit of work to get an apprenticeship contract. I'm sorry, I found I sound very like I don't want you to do it. That's not true. It's just there are a lot of rules behind the whole apprenticeship um, track that I, I just want to make sure that everybody understands. It, it's important to know that you're not necessarily going to get an apprenticeship if you join ESCP, because I, I, I want to make that clear, because if you're joining ESCP, assuming that you're going to get an apprenticeship, you could get into trouble because you're gonna to have to pay tuition fees that you didn't think you're gonna to have to pay. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But in any case, I hope I answered your question, Marie, and I hope I answered most of the questions that people are asking about the apprenticeship in the rest of the, in the rest of the Q&A. Okay, so Marco is asking about the specialization in strategy and innovation management. Is it currently opened? He asks because Uh, okay. I don't know, Marco, we're gonna have to check into that. <laughs> um, you can only find it in the syllabus list, but not on the curriculum page of the site. If it's in the, well, the answer to the question, if, if it's in the syllabus list, then it's open. That's my answer to that question. Um, um, Jana or Jana, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, is asking, if I did my first year of MIM at another university, partner with ESCP, which is the ESA Business School in Lebanon. Oh, Jana, I'm going to take this question offline, okay, because it's super specific. Um, I'm sorry to do this to you, but um, I think probably you should have a, a personal conversation about this. Um, so I'm going to ask you to write to my colleague um, who is who can be reached at MIM, the, the following email address, mimglobal, 
mimglobal at escp.eu. Um, and she'll be able to answer your very specific question, okay? Luigi is asking if the applications are open, and I answered that. Diego is asking, are there exceptions where GMAT is not necessary? No, <laughs> you have to give us a management test. It's unavoidable. Uh, Yasmin is asking about information about the deadlines for France. Um, that information is on our website, Yasmin. All of the admissions information is available on our website currently. And maybe what I can do is share my screen. Um, and show you where to find that if I can. Let's see, hold on a second. This question comes up a lot. Uh, one second. Okay, let me go back to sharing my screen. Go away. Okay, you can see my screen. I'm on our website. Um, I'm on the master and management page. I'm going to the admissions tab. Okay, admissions. You scroll down and you see a section on the application process. Uh, and you see what I just explained that the application process depends on where you carried out your previous studies. So for your question was about France, previous studies in France, you click here and then you have a button here that gives you the admission calendar, the admissions calendar for this particular admissions path is not up to date. Now I see where your question is coming from. I hate it when that happens. But this is why we do live demonstrations, gentlemen and ladies. Um, yes, it's because we don't have that updated information and I apologize for that. that will be coming imminently it should be i should have that if we should have that information by the end of the week in which case it will be up on the website early next week generally speaking for the um for this particular admissions path the uh applications are open from december to march uh it may open a little bit earlier this year i'm not sure but generally speaking at the, at the very least it's open from december until march and check back early next week that should be up on our website. But I did want to show everybody else while we're here because we often um, it's not necessarily so easy to figure out what your the admissions deadlines are for you. If you go to your admissions path, so now I'm in previous studies outside of France, for example, for the international direct admissions, you go through and you do the same thing and you find the admission calendar, which is here, you click here. And then in order to find out your calendar, you have to go to your country of residence. So you go to the drop down list and you find your country of residence. And for your country, this is the this is your um, admissions calendar. The reason we do it this way is because um, we have six campuses. And we don't want students to have to choose a campus to apply to because that gets confusing. So basically, we split up the world into six zones. Um, and each of those zones is is, um, has a campus that manages it. So people who live in the Congo, which is the country that I just chose, are managed by the Paris campus. In which case, the application deadlines, we have four rounds of admissions um, in October and January in March, and in May. That's the application deadlines. This is when the interviews take place for each of those. And these are when the admissions results will be published. Okay? And that is uh, true also for the other um, admissions path for the master segment. Um, here we have the application deadlines, the interviews, and the admissions results. Okay. So, 
Francesco is saying, Francesco is in the, his second year of university. When and where should I apply for the pre-master? Um, Francesco, you, uh, well, as I just, well, no, that's on a different web page. But if you go to the web page for pre-master, we have a section on admissions, the same, and you will find out how you apply there. Um, but the applications for the pre-master are managed out of our Turin campus. So your, your contacts will be in Turin. Um, okay, Jana is asking a question, uh, or Jana is asking a question that, that um, Samyak, maybe you can answer, which is how and when should we apply for a loan or financial aid? Is she from India? Um, because um, if you want to apply for a loan, um, I, I can tell you my case in India. So uh, when I got my admit, I, I got my admit in March. And um, I started my process somewhere around May or June. And I got my loan process in like one or one and a half month. And then there are some scholarships like Charpak scholarship and IFL scholarship. I mean, for IFL, you need to apply in the round one. But for Charpak, you can apply it till April, I guess. So these are the few things that I know. But it is specific to India. I'm not sure if she's from India. Renan, did you apply for any loans? Um, no, luckily I have my expenses covered through a separate system. So I'm not familiar cool. with the loan process. Uh, and as far as for financial aid, um, I'll answer that question because, well, actually, Jana, you're, you're from Lebanon. I assume because you're going to Aza in Lebanon, um, in which case you are not eligible for, for financial aid, so to speak, from ESCP. Uh, what you would do is you would be eligible to receive a merit-based scholarship. Uh, and that would be, um, as I said, you would be informed at admissions. So you don't have to apply for that at all. Davide is asking a question. I am currently studying my second year in an undergraduate program in business and management in Italy. Am I eligible to participate to the pre-master year? Yes, you are. If I am after the pre-master year, I, will I obtain any undergraduate certification? No, you will not. Um, no, you will not. That's the only thing. When you join the pre-master year at ESCP, you do not receive a, a, sort of a, a, a bachelor's degree. Uh, that's just, you will go, when you, when you start, when you're accepted to the pre-master year, you will go all the way through um, the master. So you will graduate with a master degree without having received a, an undergraduate degree. Uh, Ricardo is asking, is a semester enough to do a dual degree in an ESCP campus? Yes, it is. You only need one semester. <clears throat> you only need to study one semester in London, for example, to get the, the dual degree um, in London, which is with our partner school, university, college, no, City University London. Uh, Ariana is asking if the double degree is more expensive. Uh, okay, so we have dual degrees with the ESCP on the ESCP campuses, and that is at no extra fee. We have dual degrees with partner universities, some of which have no extra fee, and some of which are at, uh, have an extra fee, and that's uh, the partner school is asking for a full or a partial payment of their tuition fees. It depends on the school. Um, and then we have double degrees with uh, the partner schools in um, non-management disciplines. So that's a double degree. And those um, are the same. Some of them are at no extra fee and some are 
at an additional fee. And you will find all of that out once you're admitted to the program. We don't share that information um, beforehand. Raj is asking, what's the maximum duration for completing the whole course while doing a dual degree or exchange and doing internships as well? Brennan, can you answer that? I'm sorry, I was uh, responding to a question. Could you repeat? No, no worries. Raj is asking, what's the maximum duration for completing the whole course while doing du dual degree or exchange and doing internships as well? So I believe, so your M1 year is consecutive. The first and second semester will generally be one after the other. And then you can take up to a year of gap and then you have two more semesters as well. So generally speaking, three years from start to finish, unless there's any kind of special case I'm missing. <laughs> there's a special place you're missing, Darren. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to test you on that one. <laughs> you know, you I asked you because you generally know the roles better than I do. So <laughs> Samyak is raising his hand. Yes, Samyak, you wanna play. So uh, uh, it's four years. In the, in the four years, you need to complete your uh, degree. Yes. You win this. You win this round of questions. Sorry about that. Yeah, it, it is actually a total of four years. Um, you have to complete your first year in its entirety, and then you can start taking gaps, gap semester, gap year, uh, and you have to complete the two-year program in a total of four years. Uh, okay, Marie. I think I didn't answer this question about apprenticeship. Um, I talked a lot about the apprenticeship, but I didn't ask answer your specific question, which was, if you take the apprenticeship, do you have to study at a minimum of two campuses? And the answer is no, we want, we want you to, but you don't have, you have to study at at least one campus other than Paris in your first year. But we prefer that you study um, into somewhere else than Paris during your first year because the apprenticeship track happens on the Paris campus. Uh, Kiaha is it also is asking, is it also possible to do a double degree ESCP? I don't know how to pronounce the, the school in Italian in Venice. Um, yes, we do have a dual degree with Venice. A double degree with Venice, sorry. Kainat, I think is how you pronounce your name. Okay, I'm going to read your question first. No, um, Kainath has a very has a long question that I'm not going to read out that has to do with whether uh, with the English language exam. Um, and that is, and the answer to that question is the, you have to take the English language exam if you have not studied in an English speaking country. Um, and so, Kenneth, in your case, you do need to take the English exam. Um, Mikael or Michael is asking if the CAE, so the Cambridge C1 grade B accepted as English language requirement. I don't know what grade B is, to be honest. Um, I know that Cambridge C1, yes, is the English language um, exam that we take. Uh, Mateo is asking when I should apply to the apprenticeship track. Uh, I mentioned that, but I will repeat that you apply to the apprenticeship track um, during your M1 year. Boy. Um, I need one of you guys to take this question because I've never actually completed the application for ESCP Business School. I've looked at it, but I haven't completed it. Um, how is the application structured? Well, so that was uh, about two years ago for me. <laughs> oh, um, but uh, generally speaking, as with as many, many different university applications, it takes you through and you have to upload some of the different documents and then there will be space to have the written responses to, to various parts as well. Um, and then there's some like multiple choice, like you know, to fill in your information, like name, where you're from, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, as for what the actual step comes after what, I, I can't fully remember how that looks. <laughs> Sorry. I think that's enough to answer the question of how it's structured. Thank you very much. Um, okay, we answered that question already. Emma is asking if we recommend join, join a school in France or direct admissions. We, again, we have no preference. You, you decide which is better for you. Um, when you apply directly, from my point of view, and maybe you guys have a different opinion that you wanted to share. From from my point of view, uh, if you apply, if you, sorry, apply directly, then you have direct access immediately to our admissions advisors. So we um, we help you through the application process, and then and help you with very specific uh, questions um, for ESCP Business School. Uh, if you go through join a school in France, it's a consortium of five business schools. So you don't have that personalized approach to the school, but you do have one application that's going to five different schools. So, you know, it's killing five birds with one stone. So it just depends on, on which is better for you. Uh, which admissions paths did you guys go through? Brendan and Samia. I did direct admission from studies outside of France. Yep, me too. I did the direct admissions, but I know the process of SAI. It it has a, a single, I mean, one, two, three essays, very short essays. So if, I mean, if your target is particularly ESCP, I would recommend an IDA because then you get a bigger chance to express yourself. I mean, greater space to express yourself. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Um, Sita Star is asking for a minimum Taj Mahal score and we don't have one. We don't have any minimum scores. I can tell you, however, and I'm sorry, I'm looking for my cheat sheet. The average grades um, upon admission, the average, sorry, the average grades um, of students who are admitted are as follows. For the GMAT, it is 690, 690. For the GRE, it's 320, 320. For the Taj Maj, it's 400. And for IELTS, it's 6.5. Sorry, I don't have um, TOEFL. But those, those are averages. Um, students get in with a 620 GMAT because they have an excellent application elsewhere, um, just as an example. So, but the, I mean, we don't have minimum scores because again, we're looking at the, the whole application. Uh, the test score is actually the smallest, the least important part of the whole application. Uh, again, the most important parts are your academic background and then the interview. Um, Ria is asking about the sections of the ESCP test. Uh, and Ria, what I can recommend to you is to go through the practice tests um, on the website. You should be able to find a link to that. Uh, and if you can't, Ria, it looks like you're coming from India, I'm guessing by your name, because you have the same one as Samyak. Uh, and that is you would write to mimglobal at escp.eu, mimglobal at escp.eu to get the links um, if you can't find them, okay? Okay, Nina is asking, is saying, I take my GMAT in December. Can I apply in November and state taking the ESCP test? Absolutely not. <laughs> Nina, I'm not even going to finish reading your question because you're trying to work the system and I'm going to say absolutely not. You cannot work the system. Um, you need to decide whether you want to submit a GMAT or whether you want to take the ESCP test. Uh, you cannot start with one and then switch to another. That's not going to work. It's going to make your application ineligible, I'm afraid. So I, I wouldn't take the risk. Um, so you just need to decide first whether you want to take the GMAT or the ESCP test. And what I would recommend is um, I think probably 
both Samiak and Brennan did the GMAT, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I did GMAT and GRE. Oh, you did both. both. Okay, you like to GMAT and GRE, but neither of you took the ESCP test or the SHL? No. 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 Um, but there are other ambassadors who have taken them, uh, and you can reach out to them and ask them um, what they've taken. You can find contact uh, information for our ambassadors on the website. So I've added a name, Mukul Savant. This guy, he took the SCP SHL test. So you can oh. ping him, uh, Mukul Savant. Uh, he's one of my friends. He gave the ESCP SSL test. So you yeah. can ping him on LinkedIn, maybe the students who want to know more about ESCP SSL test. Okay. And also how do you a spell member of 180 Yes. S-A-W-A-N-T. S-A-W-A-L-T. I, I just added, Sawant. Added Sawant. His, uh, yeah, I, I just added his name on the chat. Okay, thank you very much. I'm not sure that I disabled the chat. I'm not sure people can see that. Oh no, yeah, we can we can leave messages there. I should have been putting messages there. Oh well, um, we can put messages there, but the participants cannot use it. It was just to make it easier for us to find their questions. Okay, I'm gonna put that there. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, cool. I was just- Just so you know, your screen is still sharing so we can see your email. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you very much. I just saw that I got a message from our admissions team telling me, okay, you don't want to see that either. Uh, let's just do this. Uh, you can see everything on my screen. Hello. Um, oh, that's a nice one. How's that? Um, right, I just got a message from the admissions team saying that the admissions platform is open. So now I just have to put the link on the website and then people can start applying. Um, let's see, Mareva, Mareva is asking, is work linked training possi possible? I don't know what that means. Samyak, does that mean anything to you? Work linked training? No, Maybe like sure. work study? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe if, the, if, if she's talking about a working student. So working student is a concept in Germany. Uh, yeah. where you can also do a part-time job and you can be a student or apprenticeship in Paris. Yeah. I'm not sure if it is there in London campus. I'm, I'm no, it's not. It's not there. No, it's the only place that it's really possible is in, is in Paris on the apprenticeship track. Do you guys know anybody who works part-time? Part Any full-time students who work part-time? Part-time in Paris? Yeah, or anywhere. Well, yeah, no, I mean, the SCP. I know I do, but I can't remember who it is. But yes, it exists. <laughs> okay, and but how do they manage that? What kind of job are they working? Are they working at McDonald's or are they working in a company? Um, so one of the ones I know is uh, working online remote part-time for a company that they were previously working for. Um, I have to be honest, they might not be a good example because uh, they are overworking themselves. Ah, Other people, I'm not sure. I know somebody is that. Are you talking about Yuning? No, no, I'm not. Okay, Yuning. Sorry, Yuning Lee is one of our ambassadors, and she is actually doing that. It's true. She's working on. She's in Taiwan. She's working online. She was in 180 DC as well. Ah. <laughs> okay. Even, even me, I I was working kind of part time when I didn't get my internship. So I was uh, giving uh, tuitions, math tuitions to a, to, a, to a student, to a, I think 10th grade student. And then I was also working with uh, MIM essay for the consult for these uh, MIM applications. Yeah. It was kind of a remote. And then once in a week I used to go, but then in a month I found my internship and I was working back in office. But right. it is very hectic. It, it becomes, I, I cannot recommend that in your first semester, you do a part-time because the course is already hectic. In the first semester. I worked part time too. I forgot. I was teaching <laughs> English. Ah. 
Okay, but as far as work-linked training or apprenticeship or work study or working students, um, the only place that is available in ESCP is uh, officially is in Paris, is at the Paris campus. Ingrid is asking, uh, do you still need to take a TOEFL if you studied the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program? Uh, yes, because the IB is uh, was three years previous, so the test score would no longer be valid. Generally speaking, test scores are valid for two years. Uh, Marco is asking if the presentation, the video presentation will be uploaded. Yes, you will be receiving it by email in the next couple of days. Um, Andrea is asking, and maybe one of you guys can answer this one. Samyak, I'll say you're up. If I get into an exchange, do I have to pay fees also for the partner university? So I answered this question already. So if you're in exchange, you don't need to pay any fee. It's everything is covered by ESCP. But if you apply for dual degree, it depends. For dual degree, it depends. It's the information is there on the ESCP website. But for exchange, no, you don't need to pay anything. Um, okay, here's a question. Oh, you guys aren't going to know it either. Uh, Bomi is saying, I heard that there are no speaking and writing parts on TOEIC. Is it still okay? Um, my answer to that question is, I don't know, but my website does. So if you go to the website and download um, the specific information concerning your admissions path, it will say which kind of TOEIC test you need to take. I already answered that question. Sorry, I'm just going through these questions with Arnie. Okay, Maliva is also asking, is a sandwich course possible, even if I study in London? Um, Maliva, if you mean by sandwich course, a gap, we also call that a gap semester. Yes, absolutely. Um, gap semesters are available no matter where you study, if you're studying in London or Berlin or Madrid or Turin, anywhere. Okay, Remy is saying, I've been living in China for a long time, but I still want to study a dual degree in one of the partner institutions. Is it still possible? I'm not sure I understand your question, but I'm going to interpret it. Um, if you uh, are from China, you may not apply, you may not take a dual degree at one of our Chinese partner universities. The same is true if you're from India, you may not take a dual degree at one of our Indian um, partner universities. Um, that is not the idea behind taking a dual degree at a partner school. So basically you cannot go back to your home country to take a dual degree. Okay, you is asking, is saying, I would like to apply for the pre-master. Um, it says that all students will have to validate two language courses during the program. I want to confirm that it means that every student should learn English and Italian in pre-master year. I'm not gonna read the rest of the question. So what it means, you need to validate two, uh, like, um, two languages in addition to your native language in order to graduate. So um, if your native language is not English, then you should have fluent English by the time you graduate. So C1 level. If your native language is English, then you have to have another language as your um, C1 level. So French or German or Spanish or whatever and then a B2 level in a third language. Um, and that could be any language of your choice. Generally speaking, um, we recommend the European languages, but it does, they don't have to be. It's just those are the, the, the language courses that we offer on all of our campuses. So you do not have to study the language of the country you're studying in. 
um, we recommend it because certainly it makes your experience that much richer of living in a country uh, if you can speak the language as well, but it, but it is not a requirement. Um, Priyam is asking, are TOEFL and IELTS online home tests accepted? Currently, we are accepting all versions of the online tests. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to be true through the entire recruitment cycle. Uh, I would, uh, as of January, I would check back in with us to see whether that is still true. Bomo is asking, does ESCP pick the same number of students for each round? Um, no, uh, basically the way it works is we have, um, we have an admissions bar, that's French. Uh, we have an average grade that we're looking for in the application. And if we only have 20 people who meet that grade um, of the application in a round, then we will only take 20 people. So what is to, which is to say that we're not going to fill up the class just because we want to fill it up. We, we're taking students that meet the, the requirements. Um, so it just depends on it depends on the applicants in, in any given round as to uh, how many we actually take in that round. However, we do make sure that we leave enough room for um enough in the last two sessions for students to be able to apply so um we we want people to apply early because it's better for you and it's better for us it's better for you to apply early because then you will definitely get your campus of choice if you apply in the fourth round then you may not get your first choice of campus in fact there's a good chance you will not get your first choice of campus um, which could end up being a good experience anyway. But if you come to ESCP saying, I absolutely want to study my first semester in Berlin and you don't apply to the last round, there's a, good, there's a chance that you're not going to be able to go to Berlin in your first semester. Um, so if you want to make sure you can go to Berlin in your first semester, for example, you should apply in the first round of admissions. Um, uh, I forget what, where I was going with that. So, but that said, we do leave obviously spot, spots open in the course until the last admissions round. Um, so it's not like we're gonna fill up before we get to the last round. We've, we've announced it, you can't apply in your, during that round. So that's not a problem, but, uh, but we do encourage you to apply early. It's for campuses, the reasons you should apply early. You have your first choice of campus, you have your first choice of specialization because now we're we're uh, shortly after admission. We're asking you which specialization you would like to take your second semester, so you are pretty much guaranteed your first choice of specialization. You can apply for more scholarships. Um, as Samyak mentioned, there are some scholarships that are you're eligible for only if you apply. Um, in the case of ESCP, in the first round. Um, and in general, you just have more time to apply for scholarships and loans if you apply to a school and are admitted early. That gives you that much more time to apply, uh, uh, prepare for your arrival. So there really, there's no downside to applying early, except that you need to be ready. <laughs> um, okay, Yasmin is asking, do we need to translate our transcripts like from French to English? No, you do not to trans. You do not need to translate from French to English. Aparna is asking what I meant. What did I mention about the hospitality sector? We have a um, dual degree with um, Ferrandi, which is a famous um, hospitality wow. school located in France. So, if you're interested in learn in working the hospitality sector, you can apply for the dual degree that we have with Ferrandi. Costanza is asking about the double degree in fashion and luxury. Does it have the same procedure as the art um, management double degree? All of the double degrees have the same structure, uh, have the same procedure. So you apply for them during your M1 year and you apply to us first and then to the partner school. Uh, 
Ricardo is asking, have I understood correctly that the international direct admissions path does not require an academic or professional reference? You have understood that correctly, yes. You have also understood correctly that the join a school in France path does require academic references. Quizzy is asking, do EU citizens include foreigners who have already had a titre de séjour of long-term in France? Quizzy, um, I need to know what you're referring to. Um, you want to know, you are a citizen of China, I would assume, in any case, a non-European citizen but you have a titre de séjour, a long-term titre de séjour, a carte de séjour, a residence permit, that's uh, in France. Um, that gives you access to the apprenticeship track, but does not give you access to the EU tuition fees, if that's what your question is. In order to have the EU tuition fees, you have to have an EU nationality. Andrea is asking a very specific question about the dual degree with Shaf Wiskari, and I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce that. And Andrea, I'm sorry, but I do not know the answer to your question. You need to contact the international, our inter, international relations team. Um, no, that's not true. You need to contact your university to find out whether you've been admitted to the dual degree with us. Okay, that's very specific. Ariana, uh, have, we've answered your questions. I've answered your question about apprenticeship track and where you can study in the first year. Okay, Matteo is asking a question that you guys need to answer for me, please. Um, after being admitted, how much time do we have to accept our admittance? What's your been, what's been your experience, Brendan or Samyak? Samyak? I think it was two weeks. Uh, I got two or three weeks of time. I think it was two weeks. I'm not 100% sure because it was two or two and a half years, years later. It's I think fast. it was two weeks. Yeah. You get two weeks of time to reply. Yeah, it's very fast. You have to, you have to be ready. If you once you apply, once you've had your interview, be ready to hit that start button on sending your deposit because we do give you a very short period of time. It is two weeks. Oh, Sami, you have to go, don't you? Yes, I, I am actually at the office and I need to attend a meeting at 3.30. So, uh, sorry okay. if there are any other questions. I can't um, believe it's 3.30 uh, already. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for all of your help, Samia. Go to your meeting um, and we'll be in touch. I'm sure if anybody has any questions, they know how to reach out to you because they have your name, right? Yeah, you have my name. You can just reach out on LinkedIn and text me. I will be happy to reply. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you, Samia. Okay, Brennan, we have a few questions left. Are you still with me? Yeah, bring it on. Okay, thank you. Um, some of these questions, I'll, I'll ask, have you answer the tricky ones? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bomi is asking, what percent of students can get opportunity of an interview? That's always a tricky question because we don't really share that information officially. Um, I officially can say that, um, actually, no, that's not true. Um, approximately 40% of the students get an interview. And from there, then I, I, we don't share the information of how many are admitted from there, but approximately 40% of students get an interview. Uh, 
Um, this is all very specific to Europeans. Luigi is asking, if we apply in October, what's the procedure for taking the ESCP test? The procedure is that you upload a document to the application platform saying that you would like to take the ESCP test. And then if we, um, after vetting your written application, uh, you meet our requirements, we will ask you to come to campus to take the test. Linus is asking, is there a possibility to combine combine SEMS with ESCP? And the answer is no, because ESCP is not in SEMS. SEMS, ESCP is SEMS in and of ourselves. Okay, um, Kenneth is, um, asking about the Concours d'admission directe and mastering a third language beyond French and English um, for the application process. It's not that, it's not very important. Basically, we want to see if you have minimum skills um, in a third language. That's what we want to see. It's not, it's not something that is going to have a big effect on your application. Um, Bumika, uh, so Brennan, you did not apply for the Eiffel scholarship, is that correct? No, because someone is asking about the Eiffel scholarship, if a high GRE score is necessary or a high GPA is required. Bumika, I'm not certain, but I believe that the Eiffel scholarship, it, it depends on you actually, you don't apply for the Eiffel scholarship, we apply for you. So we say, okay, Bumika has been accepted to the ESCP um, Master in Management, and we would like to put Bumika forth for the Eiffel Scholarship. But I'm not sure exactly what they take uh, in terms of, um, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question, what they're, what they're looking at, what they're deciding upon. What I would just rec recommend is Googling Eiffel Scholarship and getting the answer there. Sorry about that. Um, Zinyui is asking, what's the minimum requirement of getting a scholarship? Um, the, the, in order to get a scholarship, you have to be among the top um, applications in that admissions round. So um, generally speaking, it's the top 25 to 30 students in each admissions round um, who are offered a scholarship. So I can't give you the minimum requirement. I just say that you have to have, all I can tell you is that you have to have an excellent application in order to um, receive a, an offer. <laughs> Brendan, we have very specific questions for Samya. I don't know. You wanna answer Priyam's question? <laughs> um, as long as your CV looks pretty and you're not trying to stuff too much stuff in there, I mean, why not make it reflective of the things you think are valuable in your profile? <laughs> and his, the question was, can I include equity trading in my CV? And okay, I'll just, I, I like your There's no rule against it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Air Bud. Um, okay. I think that's it. You agree with me? Um, there's one, Toma asked a question and I asked him to re-ask it and I didn't do all those right at the beginning. Sorry, Priyam is asking, please elaborate, elaborate on what is considered a merit-based scholarship. A merit-based scholarship is what we offer to students who go to non, Sorry, I'm getting tired. Um, to non-European students who apply to ESCP, um, upon application, my goodness, I'm having a hard time with this. This really isn't that complicated. So if you're not a European student and you apply to us, at the end of the application process, if you're one of the top 
applicants, we will offer you a merit-based scholarship. It's merit-based because you're excellent. And so when you receive your offer saying, you have been admitted to, the e to ESCP, um, we're offering you a place. We will also say, and we're offering you a scholarship of XX percentage points. Um, and so you will be informed upon uh, when you are informed of the results of your application. Oof. Uh, so I hope that that makes more sense what merit-based scholarship is. I'm not sure if it's a language question or if it's more of a question of how we do it. So I think there's also a, a several questions here that are kind of wondering what the weighting is of different factors in admissions and who's considered a top uh, profile and who would fit into that top 10%, for example. Uh, well, who would fit into that top 10% are people, primarily it's people who've studied at well-known universities. And don't ask me to define a well-known university because I'm not in admissions, but our admissions teams know who the well-known universities are in each country. I mean, that's, that's what they do, you know? Um, the, the, and what, well, not well-known, it's well, it's reputa uh, universities with good reputations because obviously, you know, you could go to a university that's very well-known for their <clears throat> I don't know, uh, sociology studies, but they're not necessarily have a good reputation otherwise. It's maybe a silly example, but we know the student, the universities that have the best reputations and are the, have the best rankings. I guess that's a better way to phrase it in, around the world. Um, the, what you studied uh, in terms of, um, I mean, we know that, for example, if you're doing an engineering program, your grades perhaps are gonna be a little bit lower than if you're doing uh, a language program because of the nature of the studies. So we're gonna look at what you've studied and the grades you've gotten in those studies and, and give you a score based on that. <clears throat> and that's the most important, important part of your written application. Um, the second, a second part is the essays. Um, as what, and then the, the third and fourth are the, um, the management test and the English language test. I've already said the management test is not that important. So I know that across the industry, the business school industry, we always, we always talk about GMAT and people get really uptight about or nervous or focus on, um, their test scores at ESCP. That is not an important, that is far from being the most important factor. We are looking for people. We're not looking for people who know how to take tests. And um, for that reason, we're looking at the studies you've done and your essays to see what kind of people that we are recruiting. So I hope that helps. What do you think, Brenna? Well, great. So thanks very much for hanging with us for so long. I see that 47 people are still logged in. Uh, and I see that there are two more questions that have been asked, asked in the meantime. Uh, Huizi, you, you do not, you're not a European citizen if you don't have French nationality. It's, that's just the bottom line. It doesn't matter. I've lived in France for 25 years and I don't have French nationality, so I'm not an EU citizen. Um, and Linus is asking, what are the language requirements for EU students that did not study in France before? How many languages and at what level are necessary? Uh, the language requirements for, okay, go ahead, Brennan. Can you take that one? I mean, I believe the language requirement is English. And then uh, if, if you mean for a graduation, then you will need to then pass the, the appropriate exam at a C1 level for at least one additional language, as well as having studied a third. But um, as far as admissions goes, the since the program is in English, that's the, the only requirement. Yeah, and you do not need to speak French at all to study at ESCP. It just so happens that we were founded in France and our biggest campus is in France, but we're not a French school, we're a European school. And you do not have to speak French in order to study at ESCP. We highly recommend that you learn the language of the country that you're living in, because it's really going to make your life that much better. Um, but, and, and for more than that, obviously, I'm making, I'm reducing it down to making your life better, but certainly it's going to make a lot of things easier 
and it's going to make give you a much richer experience both personally and professionally. But you do not have to speak any of our um, languages other than English in order to join the, the program for sure, as you said, on admissions. By the time you graduate, we want you to speak three. Ideally, we want people to be trilingual when, when, they, when they graduate. You're going to be at least bilingual by the time you graduate because we're going to make you have a C1 level and a second language. Um, and hopefully you'll have a good enough level in a third language so that you can almost be trilingual, at least be proficient in a third language. Um, okay, go ahead, Brian. I know you already did. Yeah, I was just checking that out for you. <laughs> um, Zinyi, if my university is not well known in my country, but I have high GPA, IELTS, and GMAT, do I have a chance to get a scholarship? You always have a chance to get a scholarship is the only way that I can answer that question. Um, and I don't think anybody could answer that question without seeing your actual application first, your complete application. Um, yeah. But in any case, um, you're, yeah. I don't know what to say, except for in order to get a scholarship, it's it's really, I, I don't think anybody can say whether you're going to get a scholarship or not before you apply and before we see the other people who apply in your same route. Um, on the other hand, yes, having a high GPA, having a good IELTS, having a good GMAT, having great essays are all going to help the fact that you don't come from a well-known university. So, you know, if you really stack up all the rest of the things that we're looking at, that's going to help you be admitted as well as uh, receiving a scholarship. Uh, Yasmin is asking, when will the website be updated for the September 2022 in intake? Um, with the, uh, as far as the previous studies in France is concerned, as soon as I get the information, because I'm the one updating the website. Uh, and as I said, that should be early next week. And last but not least, our last question of the day, and you are the winner, Selina. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciations. If all of my essays from my from my studies are in German, I assume you mean transcripts from my studies are in German. Do I have to translate them into English, French, or can I submit them in German? Um, if there, if we're talking about transcripts, Selina, then you could submit them in German. If you're talking about essays, um, uh, I'm not certain. I you may be able to submit them in German, assuming that you live in Germany or in a country that our Berlin campus is um, managing. What I would recommend that you do is contact our Berlin team, which is at mim Berlin, M I M Berlin at ESCP.eu. La okay, last super last question, as we as they say here in France. Um, can I? Manu is asking, can I apply in round one, round one, and give my GMAT in December? You may not. You have to have your GMAT when you apply. Okay, so thank you all very much for participating today, and uh, we really appreciate all of your great questions. Brennan, thank you so much for all of your help, your great insights um, and answering all of you. You answered 230 questions today. Congratulations. We are the winning team, you and Samyak mostly. Um, and um, yes, as I said previously, you will be receiving the recording of this session by email tomorrow and feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. Um, and one little thing too, when reaching out on LinkedIn, sometimes it helps just to add a little note that it was from this session. Otherwise, there's so many spam connections on LinkedIn. It can be a little confusing for us. Ah, okay. So what should they actually write on LinkedIn? I mean, as long as you put a little message when you're trying to connect saying like, um, thanks, I was at the seminar or you know, regarding ESCP, anything like that, just to know that it's not a uh, spam. <laughs> Okay, good to know. Thanks so much. Have a good rest of the day, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.